All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Shiley Hakimian, who is the owner of YourSocialMediaSherpa.com. Shiley, how you doing? Good. I am thrilled to be here. I love that you are motivated and jazzed by hearing people's stories and dreams, and that's just really cool. So here we go. Adventure continues. There we go. <laughs> well, as you know, we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Ooh, okay, so uh, here's me. I have a weird nerdy hobby, and there's a six-minute explainer video of this weird nerdy hobby where I play uh, in-person versions of reality competition shows such, such as Big Brother and Survivor. Have you heard of those shows? I have. So we like literally host our own outside in the wilderness or in a house, depending on what show we're playing. It's insane. And you compete, and there's challenges, and people scheme and strategize. And it probably is a little bit of why I became a strategist in my business, teaching people how to strategize for marketing. But like, we strategize for like, I'm going to vote this person out. No, you don't. We should vote this person. Like, it's cute. So it's a lovely hobby. And I do it in the summer times. And it's a great little vacation. And it's a nice chance to hang out with friends, but also to create drama with friends that's temporary that goes away. Anyway, that's a little whole can of worms right there. But online... Big Brother and Survivor and Offline, Big Brother and Survivor. Yeah, what do you want to know? <laughs> do you guys go away for like a week, for a month, for a weekend? Like, how does it work? It could be a range. So like, I've done one that was a day long and I've done some that are eight days long in the woods. Uh, and I, you know, people look at this and they're like, does she really go camping? And I was like, yes, she does. <laughs> like, I, uh, it's like some, and like some of it's like more extreme, right? Some of it will be like camping and you get normal food. And some of them will be like the real show of Survivor where you don't get a lot of food. You don't really get a shelter. I've slept on the ground with like basically nothing, just sleeping on a tarp. So, uh, and probably with ticks all around and I survived. So here we are. <laughs> oh, solid. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, when you guys vote people off, so like on the eight day one, when you vote them off, do they just go home or do they hang around and still interact with people? Look, it depends. Some people decide that they want to go and help production and that's their thing. And I'm like, I'm tired now. Um, look, I've been voted out plenty of times. And sometimes you just hang out and you just like go hang out with the other people who are voted out. And it's fun. And you go eat dinner like in the middle of nowhere of Tennessee. Like so for real, there was no internet service. So we would go into town, text for a little bit, eat dinner, and then come back. But we'd all just, like, hang out and drink, and it was just fine. So, like, it's fine. And that was the eighth day, eight day one. So you get to, there's still stuff to do. Some hosts will have a chance to get people to, like, compete to get a slot back in it. So you're not, like, wasting, you know, a week away doing nothing. Um, one of them that I was voted out early, I had to basically stay in this very barren part of the woods for, like, four days straight with very little to do. But then slowly all the voted out people would join me. And I almost got voted back in, which was cr anyway. There's so many weird stories. Just so, being is there like a it. community of people that organize this, or is it just your friend group? So it's a community. So I had a friend that introduced me to like a subset of this group, like more than ten years ago. And at some point, some other people that he introduced me to decided, hey, we should make our own Facebook group. And as somebody who started uh, my social media journey on MySpace for the online version of this, by like starting my own online community, I was like, we should definitely have a group for just people who like to play these live games. So that was eventually born. And that group has been alive for probably also like 10 years now. And so there, that's been breeding more and more and more people. I thought there's maybe 300, 400 of us, but there's probably a lot more now. So I have a little bit of fame amongst this very niche hobby of mine which feels really nice satisfies just the right amount of ego boost to not like ruin my life <laughs> yeah. so it's great i gotcha and you said um that sometimes people help production are you guys recording yeah. this is it just setting up the challenges or oh really just now a lot of them will do face lives so there'll be different people with cameras or there'll be like a tribe wrangler. So like someone who has to say, hey, this tribe, you need to go walk towards this challenge site or something's coming up or we're delivering you a clue. So there's um, and then there's people who put on the challenges. So like we're setting them up and taking them down uh, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to do to put these on. Some people maybe were managing the food for production and some people are only coming for two days to help. So there's a lot of ways that different people participate. Um, and some hosts will do a lot more video production. Some will do less. One of the series I was in did full on episodes that look almost like the real show, which was shocking to me. But then they like got burnt down on it. Um, yeah. So these are not well-funded endeavors, but they're very <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got you. That is so exciting. I feel yeah. like it could be a well-funded, like, I feel like people would pay to go on these. None of the people in this, that's the tragedy of this community. 
don't know anything because we have people from the middle of nowhere america and they just love doing this but they don't know how to sell and i'm over here like business you gotta learn how to market this and blah, blah, blah. but they don't know the people that i know they don't know how to even approach like a corporate market or like to turn your wedding into a survivor game or whatever they don't even know how to do that so it's hard um and like you know it's a low cost endeavor some of them will do more premium but like you can do a whole vacation for like 500 bucks yeah and just fly somewhere and it's really nice but it's like but they don't know they don't know how to make that a thing and i think yeah i don't know it's a it's a weird hobby that takes some investment but like it's not it hasn't become such a thing uh, gotcha. but you can go on the real show i've had fr- I've, we've had people from this community get on the real shows so it's kind of cool so <laughs> That is solid. I'm just, I'm thinking because like my wife and I will be so bored and we've been trying to think about other stuff to do. That's like fun, engaging, and is like, both of us can be into it. And it's just a okay. good time growth oriented. So there's some like skill, oh. there's some strategy. It's not you growth oriented, but it's you like in a different way than you imagined. <laughs> yeah. And there's a challenge aspect to it. That's what I kind of mean by the growth, like the navigating the social dynamics. That's very applicable to life. Mm-hmm. It is, you will, the, the thing I said after my first ever game, it was like a three day, four day game and they fed us and everything. So it wasn't so bad. But like, I remember I felt like I had aged an entire year after that because in real life, like, yeah, some people lie and they like manipulate and there's bad corporate energy and all that stuff. But like to know that somebody like, to know that someone lied to your face and you had no idea till something happened, like it forces you to be all the nasty parts of who you are. But that like, sounds so crazy. fun. <laughs> it is so fun. So, Joy, if you or anybody of your listeners want to join, join Live Reality Games on Facebook, and you'll find out about all the people hosting. Um, it's fun. And they're all over the place, but some of them are in the Midwest. So, I, if I can drive there, I'll usually try to go. <laughs> yeah. that It's so fun because I love playing like social deception games like oh! Avalon or Coup or oh. Secret Wait, Hitler. Okay, Secret Hitler. I was like, okay, if you like Secret Hitler, you'll love this. Yeah. Like, Mafia, Werewolf, Secret Hitler, all of those. Like, uh huh. It uh-huh. satisfies the same itch, but now imagine like a multi-day version of it, but like with other layers. I feel like this podcast was meant to be. It's meant to be. Come <laughs> join live reality games. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting thing. And bring, you know, we need okay that we need a little bit more diversity. There's a lot of gay men, so the fact that you have a wife, I was like, come on in. <laughs> it's a lot of like eighty percent gay men. I was like, let's get some, let's get a hetero couple in there. That sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> in community so. <laughs> i gotcha i gotcha yeah man i think i really think it could be a business i know it's probably a stretch and blah blah blah, blah oh, you but... you might have the right vision for it yeah yeah i think it could be because there are so many just bored old couples or bored young couples out there who need some spice in their life and it's yeah. like it's contained spice like you're not really taking any of this drama home with you. It's like I'm just gonna, well, maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> well, look, if you play with your wife and you're doing different, like I have a couple that I actually just saw the guy the other day. Like him and his husband, like will play together, and like sometimes you have to vote each other out, and sometimes there's things that happen, or sometimes you can't reveal secrets to each other, or sometimes you go into the game and you don't tell people that you even know each other. I've done that mm. before. Solid. It's- oh, that's so. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna get me going. Anyway, Dude, just join the group, see what's what's available. It's a really good value for a good fun time. Um, you'll make it's very social, but like very competitive people. So imagine like the, like ten U's of Hit Secret Hitler all at the same time. Yeah, it's crazy. I got. And are the challenges physical based, mental based, like a bit of both? Yes, yes, and some. There's one particular one in Southern Illinois that has a lot of really hard physical challenges, and I'm like probably not going to do well in that one but usually they try to mix it up so there'll be some that are mental some that are more strategic some of them are physical some that are team based like there's a whole range puzzles so like different people will be good at different things so it'll have a range but depends on who's hosting but honestly if you just show up and go with it it's cool so solid solid cool well (laughs) now tell us a little bit about what you do (laughs) So interesting, right? So like I said, on, like I love online communities and that hobby turned into my career in a lot of ways. I manage uh, like I manage a lot of uh, social media for the Jewish community and I like that, but I also wanted to serve businesses. So I started promoting my business services at like, B- have you heard of BNI? It's like a business networking mm-hmm. group. 
So I went to BNI's and I was like, hey, you should pay me to do social media. You know, great. Like, I'll be amazing for you. But these were small businesses and they weren't really prepared to know what to do with a multi thousand dollar investment to like get social media help. So one day, one lady says, hey, you know, I don't want to hire you to do social media. And I was like, oh. she's like, but I actually want to hire you for something else. I'm like, what do you want to hire me for? She's like, can I just like pay you to show me how to do Instagram for my business? And I was like, wait a second. I studied education in school. I love working one-on-one with people. I love motivating people and I love social media. Like, and I'm a teacher, like this should be perfect for me. So I said, absolutely, I'll do that service for you. And so I taught her a bunch of stuff and she got really, really empowered. And that led to another client, to another client, to another client. And I've been teaching social media pretty much exclusively for the last like five years from working with, I don't know, what is it? More than 30 some clients, a lot of different industries. I taught at University of Chicago, a marketing course. That was really fun. Uh, I get to work with non- a little bit of nonprofits, but a lot of business owners who wear lots of different hats in their world. So they're, they try to do a little bit of everything and maybe they're like a little lost because they know they have to do this marketing thing. And they're like, what do I do? What's my right next move? Mm-hmm. But like everyone says this and that, and then they've got lots of shiny objects in there, but I'm there to like stop, help them breathe and make sure that they are staying top of mind with the people that are likely to be their next piece of business. Yeah. And that could be email marketing. That could be LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. That could be a lot of different things. But ultimately what I do is I pull out their goodness. I pull out what makes them special and I make sure their world sees it in a way that they're going to eat up and love and be excited about so that they call them for whatever their service is. So that's a little bit about your social media Sherpa.com. And it just brings me lots of joy to motivate people and help them achieve their, their dreams too. There we go. There we go. Do you work with any accounting firms? Okay. So I was on... <laughs> So I love Profit First and I was on a Profit First podcast, which is a great system for anyone who hasn't seen it for uh, how to manage your finances and knowing if you have enough money in the bank. Yeah. And I was recently on Mike McAllowitz's podcast, which was an absolute life changing thing. So a bunch of accountants were able to see me. I don't know. I've had like deals with different accounting firms, but I haven't had a ton of accounting clients, but I, their industry is so boring and it could be so much better um yeah. and i'm nagging my current accountant to, to fix it up i'm like you're so close it wouldn't take you much to be successful she already has the software i'm like girl just change a few things about your business and it'll be worth so much more please yeah. a little bit i want to get more into it <laughs> yeah. long in but yes <laughs> i gotcha i gotcha i was asking because i'm trying to buy an accounting firm or at least partial equity in an accounting Ooh, firm is that a thing yeah yeah oh, actually so the SBA recently edited their mm, rules, I guess. And so before you could only use an SBA loan to buy a full business, right? But you can still do 10% down. So it's like, if you want to buy a business that's worth $500,000, you know, businesses are evaluated on their cash flow. So if a business is bringing in $250,000 a year, you can buy it for $500,000. It's kind mm-hmm. of typical, like a 2X multiple, a 3X multiple of, Ooh, the, um, yeah. And so- then you can buy it on loan. So the SBA will give you 90% of that $500,000 and you only have to put down 10%. And then of course the cash flow from the business pays off the loan and then you have some extra cash flow to reinvest into marketing and stuff. Interesting. And you're not worried about, okay, here's my follow-up question to that. You're not worried about, because you have like part of the, the magic of an accounting firm is they have good staff. You're not worried that the staff turnover would change if the leadership changed. Well, it definitely could. It definitely could, which is why a lot of times they'll have a transition period where the owner stays on for six to 12 months after the business has been sold to help introduce you to the staff and make sure clients and staff are retained. That's that's the magical hard part because it sounds brilliant, but that maybe you're an operations genius. But that's my my nightmare. I'm like, <laughs> oh, so much operations. I'm like, oh, if so- you've got that skill, run with it. But like, whew. <laughs> So actually, I, I don't like operation. I, I like systems and processes. Oh, good. I'm pretty, I'm a pretty personable guy. I like the leadership aspect of things. Amazing. But for this first business, when I buy into the accounting firm, I want to buy partial equity. And I specifically want to buy into a firm where the dude's still kind of young, the dude or the gal is still kind of young, and they want to scale their business. So if they're like a, you know, maybe they're making a million dollars in cash flow a year. They're selling their accounting firm for $2 million. I want to buy like 10% of that firm for $200,000. So I'll put $20,000 down, have a loan out for $180,000. Holy cow, that's so cool. Okay. But then I'll have access, I'll have 20% of the equity, which means I'll get 20% of the cash flow, which means I'll get 
two hundred k a year in cash flow or whatever it is, hundred k a year in cash flow. And what um investor in a weird way, okay. You said what? Like an investor in a like a you're an investor, but you can amplify the growth. Yes, yes. And so I want to take that cash flow, and then I want to pour. So say I get a hundred thousand in cash flow. Say the debt on it is fifty thousand a year. I have fifty thousand extra dollars to spend how I want. Like you would in real estate, yeah. I could put it in real estate, but what I really want to do is put it into the marketing of this podcast to grow the brand. Ooh. And then I can tie the brand with the accounting firm and we can grow the accounting firm based on my new attention that I'm getting from my podcast. So that's the vision I have. Interesting. You you love that Alex Harmozy stuff, right? Is this this sounds a little Alex I, I saw his name in your notes. I was like, oh. I love Alex Ramosi. I'm like, this is like, this is, this is, I'm hearing because he did something kind of like this in a way, right? Yeah. And so actually how they're running their business is what I want my business ultimately to be. And it's why I want to buy an accountant, accounting firm, because an accountant can get fractional CFO equity in a business. And so in the future, I want to help other people buy businesses and I want to take equity for helping them fund it and helping them do their books. And then eventually bring in staff to like, you know, help them market, scale, do their offer, sell. And then I can take a good 30, 40% equity in the business and uh, help them scale it. So that's mm-hmm. basically what Alex Formosi does. So I like that business model and I want to do it. It's basically a private equity firm. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, I mean, I, that'd be exciting yeah. for me. But a private equity <laughs> firm combined with coaching, because I want to be able to take people from like basically homeless to middle class, then to mm-hmm. entrepreneur. So those, those, the homeless to middle class is like the nonprofit side of my vision. And then the, and by nonprofit, I mean, I use the profits from my for-profit to fund it in a way that is sustainable. Not That's the tricky nonprofit. part. You're talking about a lot of good equations here, but it's tricky. Oh, it's tricky. It's tricky, it's tricky. But, you, but I have my whole life to do it. <laughs> okay, good. You've given yourself time. I'm like, huh. Yeah. And you've done the, you've, what you have a, like, cause you, what do you, what's your thing? Like, what's your, what's, what's funding you right now? Like, what's your, your business right now is the podcast. Like, what's your thing? Now I'm going to ask you questions. Like what's your, <laughs> what's your adventure right now? So I'll answer, I'll answer real quick and then we will uh, get back to you. Okay. Okay. Whatever you want. Let's see. I'm, right. I'm trying to show against you. I'm like, huh. no, okay. But I want to <laughs> I'm curious. So I have a coaching offer. It's kind of like a, it's a 10 week program to kind of take you through 10 phases of self-improvement that I've kind of, I've gone through myself and how I've developed myself. So I looked at how I've developed over the past couple of years. I was like, before you get to the point of wanting to buy businesses and wanting to buy real estate, like I'm confident about buying businesses and buying real estate now. Like I'm gung ho about doing it and I just want to buy it. But you haven't done it yet. No, I haven't done it yet, which is why I'm well, not. That's confident. the scary part. That's what I wanted to know. I was like, oh, wait. Uh oh. But I'm not scared about it. That's the thing. That's I'm like amazing. excited and ready to go. But in order to get to like two years ago, I read this book called Buy Them Build. And I said, oh, I can't buy a business. So I dismissed the idea. Mm. Recently, I reread this book and I was like, why didn't I think I could do this two years ago? And now I'm gung ho about doing it because there was oh, some yeah. personal development that happened. And so the current coaching offer is based yeah. on that personal development and like helping people get to that point where they can buy businesses and buy real estate. And then what I want to do is go buy businesses and buy real estate. And then I can turn around and help them buy businesses and buy real estate. And so I'm not at the point where I can help people buy businesses and buy real estate yet, but I can help them grow to the point where they're gung ho about doing it. And they have kind of worked through some limiting beliefs around money, limiting beliefs around their own capabilities and Mm. risk as well. They've re they've changed their perspective on risk. And uh, so I can help people with that right now. Can't help people buy businesses yet, but I will eventually after I buy my own business, which is why I want to buy the accounting firm. So right now I got the coaching offer, but the coaching offer needs attention. And, you know, oh, I, I post now we're all coming together. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, cause I was like, you're doing some sort of coaching, but wait, this business, buying a business thing is like, these are different. Okay. So the business will fund the attention for the offer, which will increase revenue, which will then buy more attention basically. And so I was okay. like, people are really out here buying cash flow. Like they buy cash flow. It's crazy to me because a lot of people, we go buy shoes, we buy iPhones, we buy cars, we buy homes, but business owners go out and buy money. Like it's insanity. Okay. There's a lot of crap like that in the world. Like there's so many weird money hacks, but if you're not never taught about this, like you wouldn't know how to access it. Exactly. Like I just got, I've started playing with a high yield savings account and not that that's like the craziest way to get money, but I'm like, I literally did nothing. 
and I can buy myself a few bobas every month, if not more. Exactly. You know, the more I put into it, I was like, oh, that's kind of nice for doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. But like there's things like that, but like most normal everyday people will never know about them. But also, I'm also very, very wary of people who are overselling the dream too, because that's also scary. Like, you know, like you've seen the coaches out there in the world. They're like, oh, I'm going to make you a millionaire. Blah, blah, blah. That's the stuff that I don't, I get really scared of. And I think, and this kind of relates to some of your other questions of like, how, like learning how to trust myself was really hard when you see so many people saying, here's how you do a business and here's how you do this. And here, like when, when people sell you like one way of doing things that isn't your way or isn't the Timmy way or isn't the Shiley way, I think that's where a lot of people will probably get more in doubt with themselves and won't actually trust their gut when it comes to doing things and I realized I was like trying to understand everybody's information and I realized everyone's making up their own way of doing things based on them like how do we empower people to do the thing that they want to do based on who they are and that's what I really love to do with marketing is really build what they're going to do based around who they are and not some system that I came up with last week or last year that will be obsolete in a year or two like it's really like how to take what you have and what you've worked on and and make it your own and trusting yourself and not getting too caught up because I've had plenty of coaches and it's great but not getting too caught up in someone else's garbage what do yeah. you think you said what do I think about that yeah what do you think about that <laughs> I think I think it's a great like I think it's a great point and I think that's part of the reason why I'm like um buying businesses and buying real estate to me and buying cash flow you know, there's risk associated with it. It's for a very certain type of person. And I'm like, if you're not that person, honestly, I don't think you should do it. I think you should just go get a job, live below your means and invest in the stock market. There you <laughs> you go. I'm with you. I'm definitely like live, don't overdo it with the means. And yeah, it's stock market. It could be a great way to just do it safely. But like, you know, if you're someone who wants to get down and dirty and is excited to do that, great. But not every yeah. person. Like, if you tell me, oh, if I had a real estate thing and someone said the toilet's broken, I'd be like, oh, I have to call somebody and then I have to follow up on it. Like, that is my administrative nightmare because I hate that kind of stuff. But, like, real estate's a great thing to invest in, but, like, that might not work for my brain. And I'm probably not the best person to hire someone to outsource that because that's also a nightmare. So, I think one of the best pieces of advice that I would say, and I think that's one of your questions, too, is what what pain are you willing to live with? I'm like, I call it my pain to profit ratio. Yeah. <laughs> Is it worth the pain? Can I handle this type of pain? And mm. I think that's what you're answering for yourself too. That's something that you would do and you're curious about. So I think that's kind of cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, um, you know, I was talking to a dude, he was a pretty successful guy and he did some real estate syndications and, you know, now he's like working a W2 and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to invest in stock market. I'm never going to be an operator again. Cause that's not what he wants to do. He's like, that was too, too painful for me. It wasn't worth it when I could just make two hundred thousand dollars a year in a W two job with my current skill set, and then mm -hmm. I could invest half of that or three fourths of that, and in ten years, I'd have a million dollars spitting off a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, it's like, why not live like that? And I'm like, dude, that's that's a great move. If that's what you want to do, you know. I think more people need to realize that that is also an okay option because I think I actually sent this in a video to a client today. Where it's like, you know, a lot of people, I think somebody said this to me, so it's not exactly my words, but it's like people start a business to um, have more freedom in their life and have more time and do the things they love. But then they end up signing up for a job that's maybe two, twice as hard as the job they had before. And I have this client who works her booty off like crazy, but like she couldn't figure out how to outsource properly to really give herself some more time freedom. And she's like working through the night sometimes. And I'm like, girl, stop it. <laughs> like, yeah. that sucks. Uh, and so, you know, and I think it's, I heard it in some various podcast or whatever like just reminding yourself like why did you start this and how mm -hmm. like how can you let the, whatever you're doing whether it's a business or a job give you the freedom that you want and I think learning that I well, excuse me I can control my own narrative in some way or that I can attempt to control my own narrative is kind of cool and empowering that I can build it how I want and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's dream and for some it's nine to five and some that it's it's a business and you know I love I love the freedom that it's given me and I want more of the freedom that it can give me in the future. Yeah. I really like Gary V's point on this. He's like, oh, the goal yeah. is not to wake up and be rich. The goal is to wake up and be happy, like to uh -huh. wake up and live a life that you are proud to be living. And so if that means you're making $40,000 a year at your desk job and you get to spend time with your kids, do it. Like that is what you need to be doing. But if that means that you need to go run that business and try for the billion dollars and it's going to kill you with regret if you don't go do that. Then go do it. And then if you hate it, stop. 
<laughs> like it's like just um I, I like Gary V's like just permission to be authentic. And so yeah, yeah, I really like that you brought that up as well. And I so I'll tell you this. So I don't know, I started listening to Gary V like I, there was a year or two where I was like super bingy on his stuff and he, he used to have a lot more messages like that. I don't know, he changed a little bit over the last few years. Though, I haven't remember. been listening to him actually in the past few years, so I don't know yeah, what his he used to be way better. And, and like he said, like, you know, you love your family, great, but he's also grind, grind, grind. He's like five minute meetings, great. But it, you know, what also scared me is I found out like he always said, Oh, my family first and all that. And then I found out I think that he got like divorced or something lately, uh-huh. too. And I was like, This is so interesting. Like when your personal life and your private life, it's like it's like I mean, I'd be curious to hear that other layer of his story of like what do you do I mean what could have happened was he working too much I have no idea and as, as a child of a workaholic dad I'm like I'm kind of curious yeah so but I like I, I I've, I've always appreciated his point of view because I think when it comes to marketing when I heard him on, I heard him on tv first and then I followed him everywhere the way he talked about marketing and how relational it was this is like so long ago I was like, finally, someone on TV is saying what I've been saying about marketing forever is that it's the one-on-one relationships. It's the responding to every DM. It's the knowing that there's someone really special that cares about you on the other side. And it's true. He's responded to my DMs over the years. And it's it was so unheard of at the time to do that. And we're living in a world where that actually is, he really, he he loves to prove himself by showing you videos of him saying exactly what would happen in the future. And he's proved it uh the 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 one-on-one stuff works and it's part of what I teach my clients it's part of what my clients have already done in their business in the old school way before they even touch the internet and so it felt very validating to hear another marketer say that uh the other thing what was I going to say about him uh I don't know there was another nugget um I don't know there was another oh I'll say this is sidebar funniness he told me to join TikTok in 2016 and nobody was on TikTok in 20, at least no adults were on TikTok in 2016. Yeah. And he's like, this thing is going to be huge. And so to have that account, it says 2016 on it. And people were like, why the heck were you on there? I'm like, I was listening to someone who really has the pulse on things. Like, I, it's it's a really interesting thing to see happen for someone to really know exactly what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Well, let's yeah. go ahead and jump into your dreams and goals yeah. now. Tell us about your what vision for your life goals? and your business. Oof, my dreams and goals. I think I'm a little bit like you and the like, I like the idea of a personal brand around what I do and how I can empower people. I definitely do my one-on-one sessions on social media and it's great and it's wonderful, but I think there's going to be something that's a little bit more personal that evolves over the coming years that my current presence online around my business could evolve into. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I'm putting more of my heart and soul out on LinkedIn and people are appreciating it. Just this morning, an acquaintance of mine was like, Shiley, are we friends? I think you're amazing. I've been watching you grow and I've been watching you be personal online. And it's so amazing. And I'm so honored to be part of your journey. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. So I know that there's something there and I want that to be a very sustainable thing and a thing that could allow me flexibility in my life. Uh, I'll tell you this other layer of it is that I have a podcast. I don't promote it very heavily, but it's called Business or Babies. And it's navigating the decision to have kids when you have a business and you want to have a career because- women kind of get screwed over in that department all the time. And so one of the things I thought about with my business being flexible is that if I were to decide to procreate, could I have the flexibility in my schedule to do the mom thing while also doing the business thing? And my business kind of is flexible, but I want it to be sustainable if I do decide to go that route. So that would be a real dream because I know how hard it is for moms to do it. And I see my friends struggling all the time in this exact category. So that is a dream of mine too. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. And it's called Business or Babies? Business or Babies. And all the episodes are short. You could probably listen to the entire series in like three hours. There's two mega episodes that kind of encompass the little mini episodes I put out every other week. It's gotcha. cute. It's cute. And you can also submit answers to the questions and be part of the show. So it's all the interviews are asynchronous for the most part. Or it's Here me ambushing go. my friends and pressing record. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, okay no, no. and it's because you want a flexible business and children is that right potentially if i'm gonna have children i want to know why i want to have children but i also want to know like what's what are my options to either not or to have kids and what do i need to consider before having kids and i think that information is not readily available but it's something that so many of my friends struggle with 
and I wanted to put voice to it. So if I really, really cared, I would probably put a lot more energy into promoting that. But it's more of a fun project. Just like you, you want to go and hear why people are, what their dreams are and everything. Like, I just want to hear people's answers to this because I'm curious for my own personal research. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we got personal brand kind of based on how you can empower people in the works of developing that. Want to know your options around business and having kids. And that also ties in with your podcast, Business or Babies. And any other dreams or goals that you want to add to that? Ooh, ooh, what are my dreams and goals? I just, I love, I think I'm a, I'm happy and I fought really hard for my happiness and I just want to sustain that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know I haven't had, I think, well, here's something like, you know, what is a fear of mine? You know, I think a lot of people fear losing their parents and I haven't had a real experience with, I've had a little bit of grief, but not like somebody super duper close. And I'm terrified of that. So that's also something that scares the shiz out of me um Mm. so you know letting go of some of that anxiety also a great dream um but also sustaining happiness even if that happens that's a really hard thing and I always say it's a state of mind and how you approach things but like can I really say that if I've experienced something like that and I don't know I don't know yeah I gotcha yeah what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to make your dreams come true Ooh. Uh, here's what I'll say this. Uh, I want to cover my bases. I have a system that works to market my business to get, you know, I don't take a lot of clients on a year. I only want the few right people. And that takes a system of doing a certain amount of tasks and just covering my bases. So I want to make sure my assistant can, first off, I can empower her and also know how to work with an assistant better. Um, to make sure that she can do the things that I want her to do in a way that she feels empowered about where she can show off her great skills and what other skills um, not being scared to like ask for help and reach out to people when I need something I think that's been a really hard struggle but I'm getting so much better at it and I think a lot of women struggle with that too so those are a couple key areas that uh, I definitely want to uh, keep growing in terms of my skills and then just keep going consistency on what I've been doing um it's huge so we'll see there we go is there somebody you need to reach out to right now that you've been procrastinating well I was this morning so I reached out to this person and I was like hey can I ask you some questions soon when I get my stuff together he's like yeah okay I was like great I ask one of my favorite tips that I teach people if like especially like outreach if, if outreach is scary for people or like even me like I'm I'm the board of a nonprofit. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to ask people to donate money, but I don't want to like offend people because I've been asked for money in the extremely inappropriate context and I don't want to do that to anybody. And so one of the things I've learned is asking permission to ask. So before even asking for a donation, it's like, hey, would you be open to, to me asking you in the future for to donate to Shy Tribe? And that makes it a lot easier to say yes or no. And if they're like, hey, not right now, then I haven't really offended them because I've never made the ask. And, but I, if they are open to it, I've just now relieved my own anxiety about overstepping a boundary that I don't know for sure. Yeah. So that's something asking, asking like before the ask is, is a big deal for me. I gotcha. I gotcha. I like that. I like that. I see how that could relieve some of the tension in the moment. A hundred percent because I know how bad it feels when it's wrong, when it's the wrong ask. So I don't, I, I think it just shows mindfulness and trying to be real with people and not taking advantage of folks. Yeah. Yeah. What are the highest impact daily actions that are going to tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals for you? Ooh, so daily actions. One of the things I've been working on uh, that's been really weird is not looking at my phone for the first hour of the day or Ooh. 30-ish minutes, depending on the day. That's been really nice. Uh, it's been letting my mind be more calm before I get into like whatever my day is. Yeah, I got you. And how long have you been doing that? I think it's been like three weeks. Solid, solid, yeah. solid. I like. I think it. they say what if you're you have stress on your phone, you're gonna start your day with like a stressed mind. Or yeah. Something like that. I don't know who told me this, but I, I'm into it. And I told it's out there. That and it, like nope. I'm into it. I'm like great. It was on an Instagram reel. Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? <laughs> I got you. Any other actions you want to add to that or just the not looking at the phone? I mean, I go to the gym three times a week and I've been consistent on that for three years, which is bonkers. So, oh, here's another fun tip. 
Uh, if you want to work out with a personal trainer and you have a Planet Fitness near you, check to see if they have a trainer on site because it's free with your membership. Life changing. There we go. I know. Thirty. You could pay like thirty bucks a month and get unlimited personal training as long as they have a person on staff at the time. Mm. It's amazing. And if that person on staff is with another person, do you just have to wait? No, no, no. So there, there's an in the app you can like book people. So like it's a class, but I, in my gym, my gym's like the busiest gym. And it's usually not more than three people. And sometimes it's just me. I would say maybe like a third of the time it's just me. But it's usually you and another person. And then you make a new friend. And it's fantastic. So all you have to do is go on the app and book it. And it's fantastic. But most of the, I mean, some of the gyms that don't get, like some of the trainers don't get utilized at all. So it's pretty much mostly personal, if not semi-personal. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Highly recommend. <laughs> you mentioned consistency earlier, so I wrote that down for the character trait you need to develop. Would you say that's correct, or do you need to develop a different mm. character trait? I don't know if it's a character trait. I think that's anything in like business. I think a lot of people will start something and they won't stick with it. Mm-hmm. Hence, like great example, podcasts. Like you've been sticking with this for a very long time. Like people will start them and quit them really quick because they don't see results. And I'm like, well, if you don't really love it before you do the thing, you're not going to stick with it. Yep. Um, but also if you overextend yourself, like, look, if you're willing to do daily podcasts, great. You don't have to be consistent in every day. It could be every other week if you want, because it gets, even with social media, if I tell, like, I had a client who was like, I'm going to make a TikTok every day. I'm like, you're going to be exhausted in a week and a half. I promise you. I believe yeah. in you, but you're going to be dead. And I was hundred percent right. And I was like, girl, we need to space this out. Don't put two in the same day, like space them out. Maybe put one every few days. Like, yeah. don't, I don't know the word. Don't blow your load immediately on the social media or whatever. So it's a weird choice of words, but whatever. <laughs> so I don't think consistency is the word. What's the value? Oh, I don't even know. I, I love like the word curiosity is coming up for me. I'm like okay. endlessly curious, but I don't know if that's like a business. I'm trying to think how that impacts my business. I can see a number of ways it impacts your business. I'm very good at brainstorming. I think that's what people when people think they're limited in like what their possibilities are, I like shatter that immediately when I work with folks. Yeah. Like you think that's that's all you're going to do? No, you can get rid of this and you're going to be great. Yeah. 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 So you're saying you need to improve your curiosity? No, I don't know if you need to improve your curiosity. Hmm. You personally, you personally, what character trait? Do I need to work on? Ooh, I know. I knew this question ahead of time and yet here I am. She's like, I have all the character traits. I'm solid. <laughs> I'm perfect. What do I need to do? I need, I think, I, I don't know if it's a character trait, but I, keep, I think I need to trust myself more. I think every year I trust myself a little bit more. That's kind of a trait. The weird one is that you're, I love when people are authentic. And I think just me being me, like, happen to be authentic. But I feel like I've held back and I've had so many fears of revealing who I truly am to the world. And I am being a lot more open the things that i'm posting today i would have freaked out about in an anxious rage like five years ago mm. so those are other things that i want to do so like self-trust okay is there anything that you're still hiding from the world uh i will look i'll say this like i grew up with some challenges that other people didn't have and i don't i don't always share the details of it but like sometimes people decide that you are limited based on what how they perceive your difference is and I don't want, I don't want to have to compete against that. It's also the same reason why I wouldn't want to go on a reality show, because if I did something stupid on the internet, it's going to live with me forever. And I, I want to make sure that I am in a place where I can handle whatever, um limitations people put on me, because I've already established what it is that I want in the world. So I think there's a lot of pressure on myself to control my own narrative in that way. And uh but i think there's a lot of ways that i can talk about things that are hard for me without giving it a label that people will assign perceptions to i gotcha so do you think that other people's judgment would influence your own determination of where you want your life to go still like at this moment if you were put in a very judgy situation do you think where you want to go would be influenced or do you think you're firm enough in where you want to go and who you are to not be influenced i'm firm enough i just don't want to close doors that i don't even know are open yet i think i know the people that i care about and i'm grateful for that um but i don't want to create conversations that could limit me 
that I'll never know have happened, right? Like me being more open and personal with a client is very different than me being open with the world where I have no idea who's watching it and I have no idea what perception they're creating. And when I hear from a client what they think, I can address their concerns and I could say, hey, this is how it is. Um, but when I hear, when I have conversations with people about personal stuff that I don't usually talk about and I get weird reactions, that's what makes me hesitant. And it doesn't stop me from going out there and being my full self. It just means that this isn't the right time for me to do so. And mm. there's different ways. And I think this is something that comes up with my clients is that when I say, hey, be personal, it's not like, let me tell me about all your, you know, psychiatric medications on social media. It's not that. There's so many personal things that aren't intensely scary or like terrifyingly vulnerable that you can put out. Like, like uh, one of my clients put out a story about how his daughter is a performer after he's lived his entire life being a performer and it's paid his bills. And how cool is it to empower his daughter to also, you know, dr- to willingly drive her to join the circus. Yeah. And that's personal, but like it's relatable and it's not terrifying. And I think that's where I'm at as I'm going to do exactly what I tell my clients to do, just be myself online. And when there's a moment where that makes sense to be more open about things that I keep secret, I think, I think it will make more sense and I'm not losing anything by not, I'm not losing anything by keeping some stuff in. Do you think by keeping some stuff in and not being terrifyingly vulnerable in every moment, you might be, (laughs) you might be losing out on potential intense intimacy with somebody that needed that vulnerability? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I don't doubt that for a second. But I'm also like really grateful because what I am doing is still bringing in people who who are finding moments to connect with me. And I think yep. that's amazing. And I also still think there's ways to be vulnerable. I can reveal my secrets to who I want. I mean, sometimes I'm more open on podcasts than I would probably with a conversation with a friend. And that's okay. Uh, and whoever's meant to hear it is going to hear it. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay, too. I think, you know, I have a little bit more power in terms of how I what I share. Yeah. Um, and I don't say that I can control it, right? Your reputation is based on what other people say. <laughs> but um yeah. But I can use that when I when it makes sense too. Uh but I do love the power that it does when people are like, Wow, you get me. Or you understand what I'm going through. And there's plenty of moments where that can still happen. So we'll see what happens. I still have a future ahead of me. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, if there were one or two people you can meet right now, and this could be a specific person or a type Ooh. of person, and they'd help you take that next step towards your dreams and goals, who would they be and how would they help you? Here's what I would say. I Look, I I secretly want my assistant to be one of those magical people that is just gonna just help me make the administrative work in my business less painful. And she's done it so far. And I just want that. And maybe it's her or maybe it's another writer to do all the writing for me. Like that is my magical unicorn uh, of like, let's get that out of my plate. Great. Uh, I think the other thing of other kinds of people that I want to be with or meet Hmm. The other ones, this is kind of a funny one. It's not necessarily a specific person, but I've always had this aspiration to like learn from a comedian and how to do their thing to eventually incorporate that in some sort of speaking engagement format or mm-hmm. emceeing something. So I'd love to learn from a stand up comedian how they do what they do. And I think in the right time in my life, that person will appear. <laughs> I will learn from them. Solid. Yeah. I there love doing stand up for, for public speaking practice. <laughs> the right kind of suffering yeah (laughs) yeah it does take some take some guts yeah but podcasting is good too i like podcasting it's a little less terrifying a little less intense it's like it's it's honestly like my favorite way of public speaking these days yeah you know what's funny i don't even really consider podcasting public speaking (laughs) (laughs) well i look it depends on how you're it depends on how you're doing how you think about it right but it is no, it totally is. I just I just hadn't considered it. It's a real thing. You yeah. are learning how to communicate. I'm sure your first podcast didn't sound as good as your last podcast. Yeah. Because you learned something along the way and how to talk to people, right? My first podcast guest experience, I was terrified. I was like, what am I doing? And then eventually I learned how to get better and how to communicate what I want to communicate and also how to be a great guest for the host that graciously bring me on like yourself. For sure. No, it's definitely it's communication is a skill and podcasting does help develop it. That is for sure. 100%. So yeah. give that credit. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> well, cool, man. Let's go, let's go ahead and jump into our thriving three now. Oh, yes. What's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. So I 
like the podcast medium. I like the show How I Built This. I don't know if they're still as good as when I first started listening, but I love that the best way I can describe this show is that, like, you know, like, there's Disney and there's fairy tales and, like, how the princesses came to be and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's the equivalent of that, but for entrepreneurship and starting a business. And you get to hear all the ups and downs, like you were watching a movie about how someone struggled to get to where they are. And I love that because it feels like I'm talking to that business owner and hearing yep. the real truth behind the sh- the ick and the badness that they experienced that I can relate to because maybe I'm going through something similar right now. And to see that they got out of it and they found creative ways to to reach whatever peak they've reached is really mind blowing. So getting a little taste of the insight behind the company is absolutely huge and also makes me want to buy every product that they feature on there because they are sharing a story about how that thing came to be, which is really like a secret of marketing, right? Story Um, selling, yeah. It is. It's a huge thing. And it's not even the intention of the show, but it happens. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's just because that connection, right? Like we want to support our friends and our family. And so when we feel connected with somebody, like we feel connected with friends and family, we want to support them too. And so... True. Yeah. Well, what's one way you like to take care of yourself? I need to do more of this, which is I love to go get a good boba or good bubble tea somewhere. It is relaxing and it is fantastic. Or in Chicago, we have something called King Spa and Sauna. And it's like weird, amazing relaxation zone. It's like a staycation. And you mm-hmm. go for like maybe six hours and your body feels like nothing when you leave. So those are great ways that I take care of myself. There we it's go. Lovely. And what's one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to meet that comedian that can help you with the public speaking side of things? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm rushed on it. I had a mentor. Uh, actually, no, she was like a service provider to me from another company. She's like, oh, I got this guy that I can connect you with. And I it wasn't the right time and the right place to appreciate it. I don't know if it's a today thing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think what is my I think just keeping going and keep covering my bases and giving myself the time and space to let my new creativity kind of emerge to give gotcha. myself space for that. I think it's huge. Gotcha. And why do you think it's not a right now thing? I think I'm less focused on like public speaking on like a in-person capacity right now. I think a lot of people ask me, Hey, shall I come to a talk for this group and that group? And I'm like, you know, like I love it. And the right group for the right, you know, people who want to bring me on and hire me to do that. Great. But like, it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of heart and soul. So I, I don't know where that's going to come in in the short term. I'm very much focused on growing my consulting right now. Mm-hmm. So, but I know it'll pop up in other ways. Because if you give me a microphone, I get real excited. I love it. At so, what point would your consulting business need to be at for you to make the shift to public speaking and building the more personal brand side of things? It's happening right now. You sound like my accountability service that I use. <laughs> like, what is? She asked me the same question. I'm like, it's happening. It's happening simultaneously right now. Um, so I'm still doing the work that I do, but I'm putting out more personal stuff on my LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my my spot online. Uh, LinkedIn and my email my email newsletters and all that kind of good stuff. I got you. Uh, so it, I'm doing it. And I don't know what that thing is, but I'm giving myself the time because if I know anything about myself is that when I give myself a freakishly long amount of time, I will figure out exactly what it is that I need to do. Yeah. And it's paid off my entire life from like putting on comedy festivals to um, fundraising to go to a big conference every year to lobbying in DC to like all sorts of crazy stuff in my life. When I give it time and space, good things happen. Yep. Yep. I think, um, I think time is like the equalizer, if I'm being honest. The more I've like jumped into entrepreneurship, I'm just like, so many times I gave myself two weeks to become profitable. No, no, no. Two months to become profitable. Gary V says long game, all about the long game. Yeah. And it just doesn't work. Like if you just give yourself 10 years to be profitable, then you come up with ideas like, oh, I'm going to post a daily podcast for the next 10 years and see where it puts me. That's like, 10 years from now, your life will be completely changed and you'll optimize along the way. Like 200 episodes ago, I didn't have the idea of funding the marketing with my podcast by buying a business. Now I have that idea and it's like an exciting optimization where I found some marketing money where I wouldn't have otherwise. And so it's like, now it's just the execution phase of it. And so- Just the execution phase. (laughs) Oh, I mean, but- (laughs) people have bought businesses before. And then the question you have to ask yourself is, are those people inherently better than me? 
No, I just have to think like they thought and act like they act and be willing to sacrifice what they sacrifice. And yes, but exp but you're gonna learn. The first business you buy is gonna be different than the second business you buy. Exactly. And so you just have to jump in and learn. Like no book is gonna save me from the well, maybe, but most likely not, because you can read experience and then you can have experience. And they're different. Yeah. <laughs> they're different for sure. Yeah. But it's the courage to try is is going to give you so much data. I think there was a guy who runs a big investing, something investing in the stock market thing. And he's like, you can pay someone else to do that for you. And they're going to get all that learnings. Or you could just mess around with it yourself and probably still get similar results. But you're going to at least now get the benefit of learning from each decision that you make. Yep. And I'm like, well, that's really cool. Why not take more actions? And why not get that data? For yourself and the company that i used to hold me accountable like they do that really well they're like well what did you learn from this what what do you get out of this experiment so but be careful with the like look i don't know if the 10 year thing like sure do the 10 year thing but i also like i had a, a number goal i haven't hit in my business the way that i wanted to yet but every year i get better and better and i'm like okay i think that's very different than like if i don't do this i'm gonna hate myself because there's some stuff that you can't control and sometimes you need to do so much for it to work. Like I think people are like, Oh, how did you get a business? How does it work for you? And I'm like, you know what, what's my best advice? Start like seven, eight years ago and suffer and be broke for a long time and like get to where you need to go. Um, yeah. It's not, it, you, people usually see the ending result and not like the amount of grinding and the amount of learning it takes to figure out some nugget of information. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but why do you say be careful with the 10 year thing again? Just I don't know, just be careful with it because it's like, because like, but also it's like, I don't, it's like not to be lazy about it. Like, oh, I've got 10 years to figure it out. But like also not to just take the like, I think this is really easy when starting a business to do the checkbox activities. Like I'm going to get my logo and I'm going to do this. But like, that's not the thing that's going to make something grow. It's it's the ickier stuff. And I think it's so easy to just be like, oh, I did all these things and I've had this website for three years and I've got a few customers. Like, it's easy to be lazy about it. And it's it's hard. But also, I don't know. It's I, I, I don't know. It's hard. No, I got you. I got you. Don't let the 10 years rob you of the urgency. It kind of. But also, yeah. It's like somebody said it's like active patience. Like you don't yeah. give yourself 10 years yeah. and then do nothing for 10 years and then expect to be there in 10 years. You give yourself 10 years and you move with extreme urgency in the day to day, but not expect results for 10 years. That's how it's okay, been. Explained. I like that. I like that. And I will say one of the things that one of my other accountability people used to tell me, she's like, what's your one year goal? What's your three year goal? What's your five year goal? What's your 10 year goal? And I think that's cool. And like, maybe that 10 year goal is going to change in a few years. Definitely. But, <laughs> yeah. And then one of the best things that I love is like this company that I use is like, what's it? Let's do a quarterly, quarterly analysis. I never did corporate. I don't know what a quarterly analysis is, but now I've been doing it for like half a year. And I'm like, this is kind of cool because I never judge to see if I've achieved what I've achieved in the last few months, but also it gives me like a realistic something to do in the short term that could help me as a chunk for the long term. So it's, it's tricky, but like, it's not about like number, like you can't control the numbers, but you can control your actions. And I think that's something that I've put a lot more energy into is that I can control that I take the steps and the steps over time should build up into something. And yeah. that's what they sell you. if they sell you that that's honest truth. If they sell you, you're going to be a billionaire tomorrow. Like that's a scam. Yeah. So no, I like that. I like that. Cause with the 10 year goal, it's not 10 years have $10 million. It's 10 years post 2,500 podcasts. You know, Maybe. it's like, it's 10 years, it's like process goals and then bringing that to the day to day of like, okay, so what can I be consistent with day to day? I know I can post a podcast per month. And so in 10 years, I will have posted 120 episodes and I'm okay with that because that will help me meet 120 people that can put me in this direction. And so I like those process goals. Exactly. And that's also like a great hot tip of like, I heard this from when I was a lot younger. They're like, oh, make a podcast. And all the famous people will actually want to interview you because it sounds way cooler to be like, let's get on a podcast. And then like, hey, can you mentor me for an hour? And uh -huh. people say yes to it, right? So you can get crazy people to say yes to spending time together. And I don't usually just do phone calls where I just hang out with people. But like if someone says, hey, get on your podcast, like I'll do it. I love getting to know people in this way because it's not only us getting to know each other, but it's somebody else getting to know you better and getting to know me better somewhere else that I don't get to necessarily talk to you directly and i think that's what's really beautiful about this medium is that you can scale these conversations that normally wouldn't be scalable for sure no for sure i love it and relationships too so yeah
Well, awesome. Do you have five minutes to dive into limiting beliefs or do we need to cut it off right now? No, I'm, I, I, well, I'm supposed to go somewhere, but I'm going to be a little late anyway. So well, it's fine. I'm here for it. Let's do it. What's, well, limiting beliefs is scary. I, part of me is like, just like, ugh, <laughs> like, I don't want to talk about that. But also, I'm like, this could be a good challenging moment for myself. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's dive into it. You could always pass if you want to. So, oh, um, very sweet. I- yeah, no, for sure. What is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? Ooh, so this is a juicy one. So uh, I have, so a lot of women have anxiety with like body image issues. I like skipped that entire phase of my life and only had issues with finances and numbers and money. Money was always mm-hmm. like a juicy, scary topic for me. And so I spent a lot of therapy and a lot of other resources and trying to learn how I view money and where my tensions come from it. So one of the things I did recently was um, Capital One, the bank, offers this like and this is highly recommended for anybody who wants to do this like three free sessions with someone to help you understand money and I thought oh maybe this is financial knowledge but really it's like almost like therapy about money and what your goals are around money and it's been phenomenal like it's been absolutely amazing and the guy happens to be like a trying to get his PhD in like counseling or therapy or something so it feels like therapy but it's not therapy yeah so they walked me through what my learning beliefs are around money and I think a lot of my anxiety over the years, I would be like, not necessarily cheap, but like very, very extra strategic around my money. It's like, I don't want to spend 30 bucks to go eat dinner tonight because I'd rather spend that in the future. Or maybe in, you know, 20 years, I, I need that 30 bucks to go pay for my internet or something else that's more important to me. I'd rather, you know, future proof that money. And it's to the point where sometimes I wouldn't enjoy myself as much as I could afford to. And I think for me, it's, you know, is the money I spend on this one extravagant $8 boba tea, you know, is that t- robbing me of my future? And I think having unpacked all of this, that's a belief that I've kind of, I'm learning to let go of a little bit more of like, I can enjoy myself. I've, I have a budgeting system now. I have the numbers to know that I'm going to be financially secure, even if everything goes to zero. Like, I have that. And, like, going, working with a therapist to be like, yes, Shiley, this is all true. You're okay is really hard. But here I am. I'm alive and well, and I'm I'm working on it. I got you. Do you have any – so the limiting belief is money spent now is robbing me of my future. So. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's awkward. But yes. <laughs> and then do you have any limiting actions or inactions that reinforce this limiting belief? Oh, it's that moment where I'm like, do I want to go out to dinner with my friends? And then I, instead of, it's, it's the overthinking of like, do I really need this? Do I need to spend this money on the cleaner right now? Like, is this the right month? It's that extra hesitancy that Mm. I'm learning to let go of. That's the action that I'm trying to like, just, I don't want that in my brain anymore. It's like, yeah, Shiloh, you're okay. I'm probably not going to be someone that, you know, goes and spends a bajillion dollars frivolously. That's not me. Uh, as a child of two gamblers, like definitely didn't want to go that route. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I gotcha. Okay. The, do I really need this? Well, if you were to change that limiting belief into an abundant phrase that really spoke to your heart in the way that you needed mm. to hear it, what would the phrase be? Ooh, what would the phrase be? Uh, the phrase would be, um, just, you know, don't rob myself of opportunities to add little bits of joy to my life or like, maybe that's another way to do it i don't know if that's positive enough but yeah no that's great i love it do you think your limiting beliefs around money of money spent now is robbing me of my future has affected you in your business in any way Mm, i think for sure i think one of the biggest examples and like i i appreciate coaching and consulting that i've gotten from amazing people in my life but i think early on i remember how terrified i was to spend a hundred dollars to get a phone call with my like hero and by the way, she raised her prices significantly and I eventually bought her services. But if I would have bought them years earlier, could I have achieved things faster? Probably. Could I have gotten rid of other limiting beliefs sooner? Sure. Could I have, you know, started therapy sooner? Yeah, probably. I think there's a lot of stuff I could have done sooner uh, had I invested in the right resources to support me. But I think I had that fear of like, oh, I don't need this right now. But that's the stuff that would have helped me grow, whether it's getting extra help or getting better marketing for my business or getting a website you know, that slowness robbed me of a quicker future. Is there a way that money could get you further than further along faster right now that you're neglecting? 
I think no, because I think I've got a lot of stuff in place. And when I see it all in place, I think that's when I can be more strategic on the right next investment. And uh, I think that's where I got to stick with. I think me saying yes to like, yeah, I'm going to keep my assistant going at a more consistent rate. Like that's a big move and it feels great and scary. And I don't know where my head's going to be at in three months, but I know that my life will be more at peace. Yeah. Because of that investment. I gotcha. There we go. Well, when the limiting beliefs start to take over, so when you start to ha- question, do I really need this? What thoughts or actions do you resort to in order to take back control? Ooh, I remind myself that I have what I have in my budget and that it's there, right? Like I have a budget every month. I'm like, spend this amount of money on eating out with your friends. Great. I got asked to eat at a restaurant the other night and I was like, you know what? It's in there. I have the money for it. It's there. You know, I don't buy alcohol very often. And I was invited to a friend's house and they're like, yeah, we need more seltzer. I don't spend money on alcohol very often because I have so much alcohol that's in my house that like from years ago that I don't drink. So me buying alcohol is a very rare occurrence. But if somebody says, hey, come to my party, you know, I, I feel like alcohol, like in my mind, alcohol feels like a waste of money to me. Because I'm like, it's if I go to like a bar and I spend $10 on a drink, like, yeah, fine. It's a drink. Like if I have to go, I'll buy something. So of course I want to be a good patron, whatever. But like alcohol isn't the thing I want to buy. I'd rather have $10 on food or something else. Yeah. So for me to spend, this is literally, you're getting into my like weird thought processes here, but like I, was, I have the money, I have my enjoyment budget and like, I'm going to spend a 20 some bucks on really good seltzer that I enjoy because it's going to make me happy and it's gonna make my friends happy. And like, I have put the financial investment in my account to make sure that I can do that. I use YNAB and it's a fantastic budgeting software. You need a budget.com or YNAB.com. It's the initial sense for you need a budget. Yeah. Highly recommend. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, thanks for sharing all that. Yeah. Really just being raw here about the weird anxieties that go through my mind. <laughs> oh, no, all good. All good. And our last question for you is what is your favorite belief about yourself? Like what I believe in myself, like what I love about myself, like yeah. what's my what you love about yourself, what's your favorite belief, etc. Ooh, uh, the people that I love, I have their back so hardcore. If somebody hurts one of my friends, I'm coming for you. It's a weird threat of stuff, but like people have infiltrated my friends and my relationships and the people that I care about. And as a kid, I didn't have a lot of friends, so my friends are really valuable to me from all that weird childhood la la so i definitely like i love to, to protect my people my people are my people forever we're not forever for whoever they're wherever we're good for each other yeah. uh the other quote well that's a big one uh and when i hear the other thing that i love to share and to acknowledge is that every one of us has our own unique special combination of skills that nobody else has like you know my combination of teaching social media motivating people uh just loving to talk on like this in front of people is is a great combo of mine that not a lot of people will have in combination i think everyone has that but for whatever reason people hide that what and sometimes you know i who am i to say if it's a financial issue that doesn't let you let that thing shine or life circumstance or a lack of belief in yourself and it breaks my heart so i always say don't deprive the world of what makes you special and when i do see people doing the thing that they love like you making a podcast where you get to talk about your hopes and dreams and all that kind of good stuff like that's amazing you're doing your thing and that's so great and you took the courage to do that but for every one of you there's probably a thousand other people who don't feel like they can even start so that's something that I really love about myself is to really make sure when people, when I see people doing great things, I don't want them to forget how great that thing is. Yeah. I love it. Well, awesome. Shiley, that's all we got for you. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I can tell folks if you want to find me, I'm at your social media Sherpa.com or S H A I dot L Y is my personal website. You can learn way too much about me <laughs> in very little time. Uh, the other thing I'll say is if you want to learn on the social media front and if you're like, how do I actually, this is good even for you as you're thinking about marketing these firms, if you want to understand how your business network relates to your marketing efforts and how it's all the same thing and it's social media, not, it's not as scary as you think, watch my 25 minute video series. It is going to tell you everything I teach my clients and you could probably watch it and run on your own and feel a lot more confident about how you take on the internet. Uh, so that's at your social media sherpa.com. And I always love to leave people on this social media quote is that social media is about the people, not about your business. When you provide for the people, the people will provide for you. Mm. There we go. I love it. Well, Shiley, thanks so much for coming on the show. 
Thanks for having me. And I will see you on the interwebs. Of course. And if you guys are listening to this and you loved what Shiley had to say, make sure to check her out. The links that she just mentioned will be down in the show notes. We appreciate you guys for watching and we will see you on the next one. On that note, we're out.